Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru of Prince George here. Today we're taking a look at the 2024 Subaru Outback Touring in the dark mahogany pearl. So I had given this a spray off, but it's quite hot out here, so it has dried off already. But it's not black It's that you're looking at. It is like a dark cherry soda red. It's a really, really nice color. If you guys have the chance to check this out in person, you can see all that metallic in there, that little bit of red. It is a sharp looking color. Not for everyone, but I really, I'm super pumped about this color. This is the first one that we have received in, and I think it is absolutely gorgeous. So touring model is our middle of the road, one step above convenience, one step under the limited and wilderness and onyx trims, kind of what the others evolve from, or if you're looking at it like a Pokemon. Front end for 23, got a redesign, 24, keeps the same front end, that nice aggressive grill. You also get those new forward facing LED fog lights on both sides. They used to be vertical LED strips around here, but with this new bumper cutout, the more aggressive front end, they've moved to the forward facing. Right here, place flathead screwdriver, something in there. This is where you would bolt in the front recovery hook that you get with these. Not that you'll ever need them, I hope. It's to pull other people out. New aggressive styled headlights. They're a little smaller. They're all LED steering responsive and they do have high beam assist. All of the Outbacks here in Canada come with the black painted metallic mirror caps. Lots of metallic flake in there. So this car is very, very sparkly in the sun. Integrated turn signals. You get the more aggressive cladding around the wheel arches. 17 inch alloy wheels as opposed to the steels and hubcaps on the convenience. You get that cladding along the bottom of the Outback along with Outback in silver. On the rear, the wheel arch does extend onto the door. And then fuel doors on the passenger side, it's tied to the driver door lock. So you just push. And if the driver door is unlocked, the fuel door is unlocked. But if I click lock on the key fob here, one second, pops out and that locks in that little hole. So when the driver door is locked, the fuel door is locked. When it's unlocked, oh, well, there you go. Simple as that. But let's take a look at the side profile of this Outback it's a lifted wagon and I love it. You have 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance and of course Subaru's full-time symmetrical all-wheel drive. Phenomenal, phenomenal in the winter. All of the Outbacks have the roof rail system or roof rack system. Outback Wilderness is a little bit different but here we have integrated crossbars. So you lift them up, flip them across, the other side comes and locks in the corresponding hole. So you have crossbars when you need them. You can hide them away when you don't want them, don't need them, want to save on fuel with aerodynamics. You've got tie downs, front and rear. Rear of the Outback. Looks very, very similar to all of the other Supers out there. We do have backup sensors in the rear bumper. That's what those little black circles are. And they'll actually apply the brakes if it thinks you're gonna hit things in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. Now I'm a, a very functional, or very functional reform person. So I love this. It has a proximity tailgate. So the key's in my pocket, nothing in my hands, nothing in either hand. I'm holding the camera with one. All I do, so long as the key's within 46 inches, I walk up, block the logo. It beeps, I back up and it opens. You can disable that if you don't like it, but if you're walking out of the grocery store with a box of groceries, tons of bags, you're set, or you have children or pets on leashes, it's great. And there's large amount of room in the rear of the Outback. Privacy cover is standard. This is two stage, that's stage one. And the idea is you can open the hatch with the proximity and then all you do, this isn't a lot of height to load something tall or awkward. So all you do, you push it and you can see it goes to the second level, it just retracts. And that is a lot more room. So it's very practical thinking of Subaru. And of course this is easy to remove. It's just telescope. It's not telescopic like the other ones, but you've got that button and you can actually tuck this underneath the false floor. Touring does come with the cargo tray, it has a little bit of a lip on it to help contain any liquids that may spill. I'll show you underneath here. Handle, you push down, lift up. And we've got this nice little hook. And this hook, is to hold that so if you ever need to change a spare tire or access your jack, your tow hook, any of the tools, it's easy to do. And of course these side pieces pop up and you can kind of see 
where the privacy cover is supposed to lay across, which is very, very handy because a lot of manufacturers make it so you can't actually keep this in the vehicle. You have to take, if you're taking it out, it's going to sit in your garage gathering dust. You may lose it. But in the Subaru, we also have four hard mount physical tie downs. Easy to secure awkward things you don't want rolling around. We have grocery bag hooks on either side. We have a 12 volt power point on the rear passenger side, a little storage cubby with a net. And if I need to fold the seats down, I have these handles on either side. Down it goes, virtually flat. Lots of people camp in these, beneficial for that. Now, we also have an LED cargo light. That will shut off when I close the hatch or you can just have it off permanently. We have the ability to close the rear hatch or close and lock. So if I do that, press, it's gonna close. It's gonna indicate that it's locked. And let's confirm that. Let's pull on the rear passenger door or rear driver door. And then if I put my hand in here, it's gonna unlock and we're gonna see a little flash there. Ah, there you go, it's unlocked. Let's go to the second row. Second row, there's a lot more room than people expect. There's great headroom, great leg room. Touring being middle of the road is a dark gray cloth interior. Very, very comfortable. These seats actually recline. And this is hard to do one-handed, but you do that and push, and you can see it's reclined. So it's not significant, but it's enough that you could rest. You could close your eyes, you may be able to take a nap if you needed to while traveling. Well, that goes right up. And if I need to fold the seats down, I've got a lever here. And if you can see red, it's not locked, and it'll fold. Simple. If there's only one or two passengers, fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. We have map back pockets on the rear of both front seats. Two USB ports, A and C for charging, and then we have vents out of the center console in addition to underneath each front seat facing rearward. So you get a lot of airflow to the rear. So it heats up or cools down the second row very, very effectively. Grippy step. So this is textured and you can use this as a step if you've got a box or something on top. Because standing on the tire, it actually sits inside the wheel arch, wheel well. So it's harder to get purchased there bottle holder with storage. We've got soft touch materials, both on the armrest and the door itself. Power window, child locks if you need it. And as I demonstrated before with the proximity key, key just has to be with on your person within about 46 inches. Then to lock it, I've got these lines and it locks and it gives me a second to pull and confirm. Wait a second, put my hand in and it unlocks. On the inside, of course, soft touch driver door materials window lock, power windows, power mirrors, a little bit more storage than the second row door card, bottle holders the same. We have a power driver's seat, including lumbar, and that's important to note all of the Outbacks, even the base model convenience have these buttons. They're all power seats. Outback is my favorite vehicle to travel in. It's the most comfortable in my opinion for me. Of course, comfort is subjective, but it's the same seating material, dark gray cloth, these headrests, tilt, they're adjustable. You can adjust them depending how you like to sit. On the inside, by the driver's left knee, we have the ability to open the rear hatch. We've got a scroll wheel to control the brightness of your gauges. And this is the sensor for the rear hatch for the proximity. You can deactivate it by pushing it in. If you don't like it, press it. And when it's out, when you can see this little white strip at the top, that means it's active. When you can't see it, it's deactivated. Steering wheel adjustment, pull down, and it is both tilt and telescopic. So you can adjust it to drivers of varying heights, arm lengths, leg lengths, and seating positions. It does show you what door is open. If a door is open, it will show you if the hood's open even, which is kind of cool. Being push button start, foot's on the brake, light goes green, green means go. Blind spot detection indicators on both of your side mirrors. Phenomenal. Doesn't eliminate shoulder checking, but it does let you know if someone's in your blind spot or going to be. Still shoulder check, that's my recommendation. Steering wheel itself, new updated steering wheel. Same one in the 2023, left-hand side here volume nice tactile feel and sounding buttons don't know if the camera's picking that up satisfying this used to be the volume toggle they've moved it to here i get caught on test drives doing that this now changes our small little center display gives us a bunch of different information depending what you want to look at we switch between presets switch from am to fm to cd if you got a cd player installed the bluetooth etc little eye tells us what's going on if a little orange eye pops up there Accept calls, hang up or decline, or mute. And then you can access Siri or issue voice commands. 
series, obviously, for Apple CarPlay. Right-hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Both of those systems use these two-color stereo EyeSight cameras along with this third wide-angle mono camera. Most up-to-date EyeSight system Subaru offers, EyeSight 4.0. So when I turn on the cruise, you get an image of the Outback with four bars ahead of it. That's just how this one is. There can be less bars, but that is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise. So to set cruise, I pull down and these three lines right here, those will actually tell you what speed you're set to. So there's no guessing on my 104, 105, it tells you. And then if I catch up to someone, four bars at 100 kilometers an hour is roughly 150 to 180 feet. I can decrease that by pressing on this down button and you can follow closer if you're in a large metropolitan area need to follow closer, right everyone's butt. Press that, got lane centering, that steering wheel there indicates that lane centering is turned on. Above 60, if the cameras can see those, the road lines on either side, they'll illuminate white. And if it can see it, it'll actually give you gentle steering input to help keep you in the middle of your lane. Now, it is something to get used to for sure. It is not for everyone. I really like it. It's great for the second half of a day of driving. I don't recommend it around town. Try that out or have your salesperson demonstrate that for you. I like to demonstrate this stuff for my clients on our test drives. Heated steering wheel, little orange light indicates that it's on. Whole wheel is heated, except there's a dead spot right here. But whole wheel is heated, which is a nice addition. Normally, the Subarus don't heat between the seams up here, but the Outback it does. It's great. Turn that off because I don't need it. Upshift and downshift paddles. It is an automatic CVT. You can manually select your own gears if you want. Over here, we have our 11.6 inch touchscreen, and they've broken it into three portions. Top portion here, we've got what we're listening to. We've got gauges. If I want to change any of those widgets, I just simply click, select the one I want to get rid of, and I press calendar. And hey, look, Tuesday the 27th. Press it again. We'll go to weather. That's part of the three-month trial of the satellite radio you get with most new Subarus. And you do get access to X mode, which is like 4x4 low in a pickup. 99.9% .9 of people are never going to need to use this. Subarus are very, very capable anyways. That just makes it more capable. Below that, we have our main home screen, radio, medias, Bluetooth, aux, however you have your music hooked up alternatively. Hook up your phone, apps. We have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. After the vehicle's registered in your name, you'll get the my, access to the My Subaru app. That allows you to do remote start and stuff from your phone. Car info, set maintenance reminders. The little Monopoly house or envelope, as one of my customers called it the other day, that's your home button. You can turn off the display if you don't like it. Still have physical knobs for tuning and volume if you want. And then down here, we have our climate. So we still have physical buttons on either side because it is dual zone, or I can press and it brings this up and I can just touch. Easy to sync it. I can control where I want my airflow directed. If I want max AC, you've got lots of, lots of ability to change it. Now, if I bring this up while I'm driving, and I don't want to reach and press X, this will disappear after a little bit of inactivity, which is nice. So you don't have to touch it to make it go away, which is very, very handy. Just takes its time. Fan strength, nice big button. And then the heated seats, they're on the front screen. Turn it on. Now you can press to turn it down, or if you just want it off, press and hold. It goes all the way off. Very, very handy. The auto, auto start stop, press that to turn it off. Defaults to on, of course, but really easy. It's what? I don't know. Six, seven inches away from the shifter. So simple as turning it on, pressing that, and drive if you don't like it. I don't even notice it as a driver anymore, though. Parking brake, pull up to turn it on. Foot on the brake and push down to turn it off. We do have a wireless phone charger here. There's a little white light, and that will go blue when there's a device on it and it's charging. We have USB A and C chargers and an aux port for listening to music. As I mentioned before, it is an automatic CVT. We can go to full manual mode if you want. When you're in reverse, backup camera does pop up. It is kind of hard to see because it's in the shade, but top of the bumper there it does show rear assist braking is active, parking sensors are active, and you can clean the backup camera from inside the vehicle. It is great. I thought it was super gimmicky. It's one of my favorite features ever. Below that, we have our cup holders. You get one drink razor donut. And the idea is if you have a small drink, medium drink, it will sit very, very low in there and it's hard to grab without just grabbing the lid and hoping that it's gonna hold onto the cup. So that's how they combated that. Center console, there's a 12 volt outlet in there for charging. 
places to run your cords out on either side so you don't crush them and oh vin sticker we have a change tray a card tray a coin tray whatever you want to call it it is rubberized to stop things from clanging around my favorite feature ever in any vehicle doesn't matter what the vehicle is auto dimming rear view mirror there's no switch to flick it automatically dims if someone's on behind you with their high beams on it's great now we do also have an integrated compass and we have three buttons here that's your home link system so it will hook up to three separate garage doors so you don't have to carry a bulky visor opener on your visor up top we have sunglass storage we have sos and roadside that's part of the three-year trial to the connected services you get with most new subarus door light switch with led map lights sunroof controls or the regular sized sunroof it is a manual shade card holders on both mirrors mirror with van vanity mirror with lights and then you can actually extend this if the sun is directly to your left or right nice grab handles on either side and you actually got four of them which is very very handy so let's take a look under the hood i'm gonna shut this off and so long as i'm in park i don't have to even have my foot on the brake shut it off super super simple down here hood release little icon reach back pull and that beeping is going to continue until i close the door walk up front here so i pop the hood and just like every subaru to the right hand side of the subaru logo hand goes in facing down move from right to left and that is the lever right there that you move from right to left. So it's the 2.5 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated engine producing 182 horsepower. So good amount of horsepower. You get great economy with it. Everything in yellow is pretty much what the average consumer is gonna touch. So we have our dipstick, we have coolant, we have oil, we have washer fluid, and we have brake fluid. Now, people are always amazed when I show them the oil filters top mounted, which is great. You have easy access to the battery and you do have really easy access to the air filter if you want to change it yourself. Now to close these, I just like to do the drop method. I don't like to put my hands on it and push down. It feels like I'm going to break it even if I'm not. I never want to take that chance, especially with a vehicle that isn't mine. So that is a quick look at the 2024 Subaru Outback Touring. I'm just going to give you guys a quick walk around this maybe see it from an angle that I didn't show in the video. And this is in the dark mahogany pearl. I am a huge fan of this color. I don't know if it would work well on a wilderness model or not, but I think it's a very refined color and the metallic flake in it looks absolutely phenomenal if you ask me. Look at the 2024 Subaru Outback Touring. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Print Storage. If you guys are in British Columbia looking for a Subaru, please reach out to me. Put a comment in the video to comments area or send me an email. You can find my contact info in the about page on my channel. Again, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.